podcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right, I want to thank you for joining us for today's live webinar from Asterix entitled End-to-End -End Regulatory Information Management, a case study of Aviva RIM implementation. Today's presentation is again brought to you by Asterix and presented by Heather Adenolfi, whom I'll introduce in just a moment. Heather, you can go to the next slide, please. Uh, before we get into the content, if you've never participated in an Asterix webinar before, um, we'd like to take a moment to explain exactly who we are, uh, why we're talking to you today uh, about these topics, uh, so just a, a, a quick company snapshot, you know, we've been around for over 25, if we just go back to that last slide real quick, uh, we've been around for over 25 years and we bring a very unique breadth of very specialized services, uh, process and technology. It's allowed us to become a leading partner in transforming the ways that science-based businesses uh, succeed. There's some fast facts here. Uh, we were established in 1995. Uh, we work with a wide array of platforms. We'll talk a little bit about one of those today, uh, but we remain agnostic in that we recommend the best tools for our customers, not the ones that pay us money. Uh, we have locations in the United States and overseas. We employ over 1,200 uh, great employees, 90% of which uh, hold advanced science degrees. We're very much a science-based company that helps science-based businesses with our headquarters in beautiful Red Bank, New Jersey. The type of companies that we're helping, everybody from startups to Fortune 1000, life science enterprises, chemical CPG, we work with government agencies, as well as dedicated research institutions. So that's a little bit about the company. Uh, in terms of the services that we provide, I'll go through those next. Um, there's a full spectrum of services. We'd like to say that we support the continuum of scientific operations and data management. And what that means is from the very beginning, we can help customers with strategic innovation and roadmaps. That's where we help to deliver uh, strategies and roadmaps uh, that are, you know, help help a company map out what their ultimate uh, journey should look like from a technology perspective. Enterprise architecture, we can help, you know, define what that technology stack is going to look like. Data management and governance, we can help you implement strategies and frameworks to make sure you're maximizing the value of your digital assets. Uh, and you're obviously in compliance with the right bodies. Business analysis, ensuring you've got the right people, process, and technology in place. From there, we can even help you select uh, various solutions. We can help develop and implement and validate those solutions. And then on the back end of all of this, um, one of the things that makes us unique is that we, um, you know, we 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 can staff it. You know, we could do staffing through um, scientific staffing, technical staffing, IT staffing, and, and things along those lines. Um, so that's a little bit about us. I want to shift gears now, introduce Heather, uh, and have her take a moment uh, to talk to you. So Heather Adenolfi is with the Integrated Business Analyst and Practice Lead here at Asterix. She leads clients in program management, optimization, and regulatory PV related organizations. She brings to today's conversation over 10 years of experience in the pharmaceutical informatics industries. Uh, as a practice lead, Heather works very closely with clients and software vendors to streamline workflows, uh, ensure effective cross-functional communication and drive successful implementation. So Heather, I'm going to go ahead and let you kind of pick it up from here. And again, encourage everybody to ask questions. I'll come back on at the end and uh, and help with those. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Hi, all. Thanks for joining me here today. Um, so before we get into the meat of everything, I um, wanted to walk you through what we're going to talk about. So first up is a quick recap of the takeaways from our previous discussion on end-to-end -end implementations. Um, so if you were able to join us for that webinar back in January, um, this will be a little bit of a refresh. Um, but if you didn't get a chance to sit in on that one, it's going to help set the stage for how Asterix thinks about implementations and user adoptions, at least from a high-level perspective. Um, and so after that, we'll talk about the case study itself, and I'll give you a high-level introduction to the ask. Um, and the situation, and then we'll discuss the solution overview and the scope, and then we'll take a walk through how we navigated the multi-workstream implementation. Um, I'll walk you through some of the key considerations, and we'll wrap up with an understanding of the outcomes to date and some of the key takeaways for you as you embark on a similar journey. Okay, so starting with a very quick recap um, of where we left off in January. So this diagram might look familiar if you were in that session with me. Um, it's really a roll up of many activities that are needed to manage an implementation. Um, and under the hood of these four items are workflows that are tackled cross-functionally um, in different teams that stay in touch through constant communication. 
They're often iterative um, as companies progress through these different steps to understand capabilities and to get users into the system. So today we're going to talk through Asterisk's involvement in these activities with a top 10 pharma company and how we worked hand in hand with the Viva team members to support their end-to-end -end Viva RIM implementation. Okay, so here's where we started. So a top 10 pharma company was starting on their journey to implement the Viva RIM solution. Um, this included global regulatory submissions, CMC submissions, safety submissions, and everything in between. Um, these global teams were leveraging disparate sets of tools. They had uh, multiple LAN areas that they were storing information in, SharePoints. They were purpose-built, not connected and homegrown tools. And there were quite a lot of spreadsheets. Um, and some of this might sound familiar because it's a common theme. Most organizations working globally have a lot of different tools that they're trying to bring together. Um, and they were trying to plan and track submissions across all regions with this different set of tools. And due to varying regional requirements and honestly just simple divergence over time, uh, the global teams didn't always share the same processes or even the same terminology. So this company was looking to evolve their RIM ecosystem into a globally consistent RIM solution. So to this end, they engaged Asterix to help on their multi-year journey, uh, first to assess the global current state and next to develop a harmonized future state and followed that up with requirements, configuration sessions, implementation planning, and more of the things that you're seeing here on this slide. <clears throat> so we engaged teams, both the sponsor company team and Viva to understand and document those processes, issues, opportunities, before collaborating with subject matter experts and core team members to design what that future state really looked like. And with the Viva team members as part of our team, we were able to get their input along the way on the best practices and suggestions um, for things that they've seen work and understand their terminology at each step. So as we move from initial definitions, we turn to defining rollout strategies, identifying migration needs, and planning for those user adoptions. Um, and at each point, this unified cross-company team was really what drove this successful implementation. And that tight-knit team structure was really needed because we were embarking on a path to implement processes in RIM, supporting everything from major market submissions, regional markets, annual reports, promotional materials, labeling submissions, CMC submissions, and all the way from planning and tracking through the authoring, the actual submission of that material to the health authority, archive and any of those recurring and follow-on activities like management of correspondence, updating of outcomes and registrations, and post-approval activities. So when it came to existing tools and data, it really boiled down to two options. Do we have systems that we need to be integrating with, whether they're part of the regulatory organization or adjacent organization, we wanna keep them, but we wanna be able to exchange data and information between those. Um, or is it a legacy system that we'd like to bring that capability into the RIM solution, so we'll need to migrate that legacy data into RIM. So all of this was in scope of this work. So if we look back at this approach slide that I showed a couple minutes ago, and we think about how this applies, um, you can see that this company had already done some of the legwork on their own. <clears throat> um, they already knew the vendor they wanted to implement, which of course was Viva, um, and they had done some of the work to define their high-level vision and goals. And we came in at the point, this point to help them drive the detailed requirements and do a lot of the business analysis and also to create and manage the plans for implementation and rollout and to help them manage that change management through adoption planning, stakeholder analysis, and communications. So if we look 
more specifically and closer at what that really boils down to for this particular case, um, the team, that pharma company, Asterix and Viva, um, work together to establish work streams and strong communication channels. We work together to define and prioritize capabilities. We engage these cross-functional teams to define processes. And we ensured that users had access to the right data at the right time. So now I want to look a little bit closer at each one of these four steps and break down a bit more of what we did to ensure success. <clears throat> okay, so starting with work streams. So work streams were established for each of the impacted organizations and the major workflows. So that was, for example, CMC workflows, safety workflows, and then things like regulatory. And where it made sense to break those down even further for things like managing of authoring workflows or archive, uh, publishing workflows or labeling workflows, we did that to make sure that we had the right teams in the right meetings um, and were able to focus our areas for each of those. So all of our workstream teams consisted of the sponsor company, business and IT representatives in addition to Asterix and Viva team members. Um, it was really important to have all of those represented um, because we were able to incorporate all of those perspectives from both the business and IT representatives in the same meeting. Everyone had a voice. So we also engaged subject matter experts and adjacent organizations like safety, clinical, or stats where it made sense. Um, so there were some work streams that were more heavily reliant on adjacent organizations than others. Um, or there were some work streams where we were bringing folks in here or there to add their perspective and expertise. Uh, but really, we wouldn't have been able to accomplish what we had set out to do without a strong communication channel within each of the work streams and between those work streams. Um, and last but not least, we, we put a lot of consideration into developing those communication channels. Um, we leverage teams a lot. Um, we leverage Kanban boards within teams. Uh, we leverage weekly check-ins and meetings, workshops, and daily stand-ups as well. Um, and we also had to consider time zones. So we made sure to accommodate global team members. Most of the work streams did have team members uh, represented around the world. Um, so we needed to make sure that we were scheduling meetings at times where they could make it and they can contribute to those ideas. Um, we also had to work with and accommodate uh, everyone's day jobs. So they had to keep submissions running and keep hitting those targets. Um, all while helping to progress this implementation. So as we worked through these work streams, um, that was all taken into consideration to make sure that we were uh, keeping in lockstep with all the work going on. Okay. So the next piece is really process readiness. Um, so regardless of which work stream, there was an element of this process readiness. And so what I mean by that is really a focus on laying the groundwork and establishing that future state. <clears throat> so we led the team through an assessment of their current processes, um, which really served as the foundation from which to build that future vision and to identify that future process. Um, by leveraging a framework of common capabilities, we were able to draft requirements, um, but then make those requirements reflect the nuances of this particular company's workflows. Um, a submission is a submission, but there's always different ways that companies will work with, um, work with their documents, collaborate on the authoring. So we wanted to make sure that we understood in a detailed fashion um, what this particular company was doing and why and what works for them and what didn't so we could build even better workflows in Viva as we move forward. Um, and again, we worked with our global subject matter experts to align on those processes and also to align on key terminology. 
So as we got into understanding what each of these regions were doing, um, it became apparent that some of not just the tools they were using and the processes were different, but some of the things that they were speaking about um, were similar, but being used in different ways. So if you think about something like a correspondence, um, it might mean one thing to you and it might mean something different to your global teams. Um, so you might have someone thinking that it's just emails, but is it emails and meeting minutes? Other things like that. So we wanted to make sure that we uncovered all of those as we went through that first piece of the current state so that we could bring everybody together and come up with that harmonized future state as we moved forward. Um, so that was really critical um, that we got agreement on terms like that um, and that everyone globally was aligned to what it was going to mean when they moved to the Viva RIM system. So the other piece that was really important in those conversations was having Viva in the room. Um, as I mentioned before, each of our work streams consisted of our sponsor company plus Asterix plus Viva. Um, and that was really helpful because we were able to talk as a, as a team um, and Viva was able to help us understand how these terms were used within the system and how that might impact the way we put workflows together. As we moved from those initial requirements and alignment sessions, we moved into later work streams, which really built on those initial requirements and took us into real scenarios within the Viva RIM system. So together with the Viva representatives, we developed and tested use cases to identify specific configuration changes that were needed. And again, bringing in subject matter experts where it made sense to help clarify and provide guidance. And ultimately, we documented and communicated those outcomes and used those configuration items and discussions to prioritize into release plans. And next, when it comes to data readiness, um, a lot of these work streams were running in parallel. So just because I'm talking in sequence doesn't mean that we did them in sequence. There were a lot of things that were iterative and that built on each other. So we would get some data ready. We might pass it back to the process group. We might then bring it back to our data readiness work streams um, where one was defining that process and one was really looking at more of the data between systems, doing that data mapping and defining cross-functional processes. So where we needed to integrate, for example, with an adjacent organization system, we had to consider um, not only what was happening within RIM when we received that data or when we sent that data out, um, but also what was happening in the adjacent system. So were there configurations that were needed in other systems to support this integration? Um, what was happening in the data backbone that needed to support the, the mapping of this data as we exchanged information with organizations and all of that came into play within these data readiness work streams. So as part of our Asterix program management support, we did enable our sponsor to execute on these migration and integration work by establishing pressure testing and facilitating work stream activities and the timelines associated with those. Um, so including, but really not limited to the set of activities that you see on this slide here. Okay, and then to support those migrations and integrations, the sponsor teams worked with the Viva teams directly to stand up testing environments, to map data, and to develop migration tools. Um, the teams met regularly to identify and remove any blockers and leverage a lot, a lot of the communication channels that I mentioned previously. <clears throat> and all of this were really just parts of that larger phased rollout strategy. So based on a lot of different things, including Viva's product release timing, um, our work stream outcomes and iterations, and things like key submission dates, uh, the team developed and iteratively refreshed our release plans um, that outline the scope for each of the subsequent releases. Um, oops, sorry, go back one more. There we go. Um, 
so where additional REM functionality was needed, um, we also had subject matter experts meet with Viva product managers to be able to describe their needs and communicate urgency. And the team actually met regularly with the Viva product and project teams to understand um, new capabilities or enhancements to capabilities, um, understand new modules and the timing of that. And then accompanying release plans um, were adoption plans. So we worked with the subject matter experts and our core teams um, to outline the set of activities that are needed to understand and communicate with the impacted stakeholders, um, to develop and provide training materials and really to support those users in their onboarding. Um, our adoption plans accounted for user groups ac across the submission process. Um, and in, in this case, we took into account a number of factors like Viva capabilities, legacy system constraints, making sure we had business continuity before we planned our phase rollout um, and as we iterated on that phase rollout throughout our work streams um, and decided to kick things off with implementing authoring capabilities uh, first, followed by archive capabilities and then expanding into that uh, larger scope that we talked about. So later on and later work streams in parallel with things like implementing the authoring and archive um, started to tackle things like registration and submission planning and then further down the line was an expansion of the, the user groups into things like patient safety and labeling processes so again to to kind of drive home the communication piece um, in order to keep all of these work streams that were going on in parallel or spinning up as others ended, um, we needed to keep everything in lockstep. So we leveraged weekly leadership meetings, work stream dashboards, workshops, daily stand-ups, um, IMs a lot to keep people aligned and up to date and everything was documented in dashboards. Um, so there was a lot of communication going on, a lot to manage within these parallel work streams. And really, um, the ultimate goal was to make sure that every, all work streams were hitting their dates and that there was transparency across the program. Um, and then as users were onboarded, we wanted to make sure that we were keeping them informed of what was updated and that they felt supported along the way as well. Um, so we developed and issued monthly newsletters and then released specific newsletters as, as modules evolved and capabilities were added into the system. Um, and we also developed and managed content for the intranet site that this company was using to support their users. Um, and over time, we would iterate back on those plans, refresh those materials, those newsletters, job aids, et cetera, that were on the internet so that our users would be up to date with the latest information. Okay, so walk you through those four pieces of the puzzle um, and you probably saw a com couple common themes come up. Um, we've talked through, I think most of these, by this point, but I think they're worth mentioning um, because they did, all six of these were things that did come up in each of the work streams um, and they're things to keep an eye on. So starting with team members bandwidth, um, we often ran into challenges with core team members uh, on multiple work streams. So we had sponsor team members that were part of some leading, some just participating in multiple work streams. We also had subject matter experts who had to keep the submissions going and on target um, while they were providing input into these work streams. Um, so we needed to make sure to accommodate those critical deadlines and make sure that we were working um, alongside what their schedules permitted. Um, we had to plan for data migration and user onboarding around key submission dates as well um, because we didn't want to hit any critical dates or delay any submissions. So we often needed to revisit timelines um, as things may have shifted in the portfolio since we had planned them originally. Um, so we had to continue to keep checking back on those things. Um, I mentioned back in the beginning, coordinating time zones and global teams. Um, it's really easy to 
think communication across the globe because we have IM and we have email and it's very easy to communicate with teams, but it's also very easy to forget that someone's on a meeting at 4 a.m. or they just joined after they put their kids to bed. Um, so we wanted to be considerate of people's schedules um, and make sure that we were, you know, if we have an early morning meeting, we might go to a late meeting the next time we meet so that we're accommodating. Um, but the other thing that we needed to keep an eye on was making sure that we were getting people feedback in time. So for example, um, when testing integrations, we had a team who was in India and we had to make sure that we were getting them feedback um, and when I say we, I mean the sponsor company and Asterix and Viva teams um, together had to make sure that we were getting feedback to this team um, before they signed out for the day, which their evening, our morning, um, so that we could get them feedback in time for them to rerun testing or update configuration items the next morning for them. And then if we look at work stream dependencies and parallel efforts, um, I don't think this one really needs a lot of introduction. We've talked a bit about it already. Um, it relates to both bullet, the first bullet here and to the overall implementation plans. Um, really strong communication and visibility were key to staying on track with everything going on at once. Um, and then the impact of systems and process change to business users. It's, it's very easy to think that the system is going to solve everyone's problems, but in reality, it introduces change. And anytime you introduce change, you're introducing a learning curve. Um, so Viva Systems system created many efficiencies for this company, but it was also difficult to meet some of the complicated business processes and rules that had been baked into decades old legacy systems. So we had to consider how users were performing the work currently and what those changes would mean to their day-to-day -day operations. I'm kind of tagged onto that product enhancements in Viva Roadmap. So one way we were able to address negative process changes was through Viva's product updates. Um, the team continues to work with Viva to identify and implement new capabilities in order to optimize workflows. And last but not least, ongoing and upcoming work in adjacent organizations, sort of reiterating the team members bandwidth point. Um, adjacent organizations also presented challenges when their work streams required, when work streams required input from their SMEs. Um, so sometimes there were competing projects or work going on in other organizations that would impact our work stream processes or delay some of the feedback we were getting from those adjacent organizations. So we needed to make sure that we were factoring all of that into our project plans and our timelines too. But ultimately, um, this pharma company is currently leveraging a successful Viva RIM implementation and next up on the list is to expand on those use cases and to look towards optimizing processes and intelligence through use of automation. So to wrap up, uh, we partnered closely with Viva on this implementation and you'll want to partner closely with your RIM vendor as well. Um, you'll also need strong program management and experienced team members across work streams to drive that work in parallel. And if you're embarking on this journey and you want to learn more, please reach out with questions. Thank you all for your time for listening. And if you have any questions, let us know. Yeah, again, folks, thank you very much. Uh, have a great presentation. I want to reiterate for the folks that are on, um, you can ask a question. Um, just type it in and we'll field it as best we can. Uh, if we don't get to your questions, we can reach out to you kind of one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I got a few I'll get to here in just a sec. Um, also, as I mentioned uh, in the beginning of the session, if you weren't on for that, <clears throat> we uh, record these sessions and this one is actually going to stop recording right now.